Hi y'all, bonjour, hola, welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial series. I hope you're enjoying all of these flyers and tutorials I'm putting out there. So today we are going to do a quick flyer on how to design a wedding invitation card. So without further ado, let's jump right into this tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is create a canvas. So I'm going to go to File, New, and then you want to keep your width at 6 and your height, we want to change that to 8. And notice that my dimensions are in inches. Your resolution should be 3. We're going to click on Create. So with our canvas open for us, you want to make sure your foreground and backgrounds are black and white. So the first thing that we are going to do is to apply a white background. I'm going to pick my paint bucket and I'm going to click inside my canvas. So now that we have this set, we want to now begin to bring in the different elements that we want to add. So I'm going to click on my shapes and I'm going to choose polygon and you want to make sure that at the very top, you don't have pixels selected, but you have shape and your fill is zero. So that is a strike. So it's empty and you want to make sure that under your stroke, you pick whatever color that you want. So I'm just going to pick this color like this goldish. Or if you want, you can click here and choose something close to what you want. I'm going to click OK. And then you want to make sure your pixels is at five pixels. And I'm choosing a line, not a broken line. So now that I have this, I'm just going to draw a polygon. And I'm going to use my move tool. And I'm, I want to move my polygon, but you want to make sure your background is locked so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to zoom out so you can see the entire thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate that just a little, something like this, and then I'm going to stretch it, make it a little bit bigger like that. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold on my shift and I'm going to sort of stretch it a little bit more. I'm going to basically distort it and I'm going to rotate. So now that I have this, I'm going to make a duplicate. So I'm going to click on my polygon and I'm going to make a duplicate and I'm going to Rotate. I'm not going to move it. I'm just going to rotate just like that. And I'm going to add one more. So notice that to make a duplicate, you can right click and either click on duplicate or you can select your layer, drop it to your plus icon. It will create a duplicate and we are going to turn it this way. So now we have three. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all three, holding down my shift, and I'm going to rotate all three. And then I'm going to scale it so it fits inside my boundary and not outside my boundary. And then I want to stretch it just a little. I'm going to click on this polygon. And if you want to even scale it, you can scale it just a little bit more and you can scale that in. So you have something like this. So I'm going to go to my folder and in my folder, you see that I have different options, but I want to use this one. So I'm going to click and drag this into my Wacken file. I'm going to double click to deselect. By the way, if you're wondering how I got this image online, all you have to do is when you go online, just look at the name that I've typed in here. So this is watercolor flower border frame transparent or you can put p and g next to it so whatever pulls up will not have a background so you see you have so many options or if you don't want the full border you can go for ones that are individual and you can play with it 
to get the desired effect that you want. Some of them already come with a border. You don't have to create it yourself. But if you want something unique, you can create it yourself. Now, this is the one that I am using in this tutorial. So we're going to go back to our Wiccan file and I'm going to rotate this and I'm going to rescale it like that. And I'm going to set it right there. And I'm going to rotate, rescale a little bit more. I'm going to set it right there. So this is just eyeballing. So you get the desired effect that you want. I'm going to double click to deselect. I'm going to create a duplicate and I'm going to move it to the opposite side. So I'm going to flip this. So I'm going to go to edit, transform, and I'm going to flip vertical. And I'm going to go back again, transform, flip horizontal. So I have it the way I want. And I'm going to set that right there. So I like the way it looks so far, but I want to reposition my, um, my border. So I'm going to click on my polygon, all three, and I'm just going to rotate just like that. And then I'm going to scale it down just a little so I have everything inside the white area. So I have something like this. And if I want, I can rescale this so I have it more like that. So I like, I like the way it looks. This is so perfect. So I'm going to rotate this a little. I don't like the angle. And I'm going to set it right there. I'm now going to add one more element. So I'm going to go back into my Wacken file and I'm going to drag this into our file. I'm going to double click and then I'm just going to scale it and rotate at the same time. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to make that fill up our canvas. I'm going to scale so it fills up the entire thing. So we have something like this. I'm going to double click. So what I'm going to do is that I want to put this in the background. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom. So we have something like this. I feel it's too much and we want to take off the watercolor section within the polygon area. So what I'm going to do I'm going to select all three polygons. I'm going to right click and convert it to smart object. So now we have one image that we're working with. And now I'm going to press down my control and then select my polygon. And you want to go to select and then choose inverse. Every part of our canvas has been selected except the polygon itself. So with my eraser tool, I'm going to click and convert this to smart object and I'm going to paint inside. Oops. I'm going to make sure I select my watercolor. So I'm going to increase my brush head a little and then I'm just going to paint. So you get this gradual effect that is happening around your polygon and it's not so intense. So we have something like this. I'm going to press Control D to deselect. And then I want to take down the opacity of my watercolor. So I'm just going to reduce it just so. And with my eraser, I'm just going to do some more erasing around the edges. So we have something like this. And now I also want to take down the opacity of the floral. So we have something like this and it's not too much. And I'm gonna do the same thing here as well. So now we have something like this. I'm gonna select my polygon layer and with my eraser, I'm going to reduce my eraser head and I want to erase all the poly line that is showing inside my flower. I'm going to do the same thing here and take this down just like that. But notice that you still see another line. 
And that is because of the watercolor when we erase. So I'm going to turn off my polygon and I'm just going to erase it just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing here and on this area as well. I'm going to turn back my polygon so we have something like this. I want to erase this area a little so we have sort of a faded effect that is going on. I want to erase a little bit more of the watercolor. So I want to take this area down a little. So the watercolor is just in the two corners, and not too much. So we have some white. Okay, so with this set for us, all we are going to do is pick our text tool and we are going to begin to add our information. So I'm going to click on my foreground and I'm going to choose a different color. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to type inside my canvas. I'm going to type wedding. I'm going to highlight. I'm going to select first of all and rescale so we can see it bigger. And I'm going to highlight. We want to change the font color to that. So the font color is script Tina. So in case you want that same font for your design, and I'm just going to scale it like that. I'm going to reset it somewhere here. I'm going to deselect and I'm going to highlight again. I want a deeper, a more deeper color. So I'm going to go up a little notch it down just a little. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just keep adding more text. So I'm going to change this color. We're going to choose a more of a goldish color, something like this. And we are going to pick our text tool and then we are going to type in a few more information. I'm going to highlight and we're going to change the font color to Basketville Old Face. And I'm going to select everything and we're going to scale it down and we're going to move it right there. I'm going to scale it a little bit more. And then we're going to center that. So from here, we want to make a duplicate of that same layer. And I'm going to drag that down and I'm going to select and we're going to name, we're going to type in the name of the couple. And then we're going to pick our move tool. We're going to scale it like so. We're going to set it right there. We're going to move it down a little and we are going to select everything and we're going to center so that we have the end in the middle, so we have something like this. I'm going to add a little bit more flavor, so I'm going to highlight this and change it to a different color, so we have a little bit of a contrast effect happening within the text. I'm going to go ahead and add the date, so we're going to zoom in. We want the date somewhere here, so I'm going to make a duplicate of, our same, of the same text. I'm going to make a duplicate. I'm going to bring it down here. And I'm just going to type in the date. I'm going to fast forward so we can see it. And now the last thing we're going to do to make our date stand out a little bit more is that we want to create a new layer. And then we're going to add some two bars on top and beneath of our date. So I'm going to create something like this, very thin line using my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to pick up my paint bucket and I'm going to paint that in. Control D to deselect. And with my move tool, I'm going to move this down. And then I'm going to make a duplicate and move that down, holding down my down arrow. I'm just going to move it down just like that. And you want to align that with your twin, the 
you want to align that with the 29th. So as you can see, all I have to do is move this up just a little to align. And now that we have this, so I'm going to make a duplicate of the two. I'm going to select both and then drag it to my duplicate icon. And I'm going to select both and move it right over and beneath the year. And we're going to zoom out. It looks good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my middle text just slightly so it's centered. Now we want to move the whole thing up a little. So I'm going to look for all the layers and we are going to select all of it. And I'm going to move it up just a little so it's beneath the wedding text. And we want to add the time. So to add the time, we're going to make a duplicate of one of our texts. We're going to pull that down. And we are going to, oops, so we're going to select our text. We want to move it out of the big text. And we want to highlight. And we're going to type in Saturday. So you can put it right beneath the date or you can align it with August. But I think this looks good and it's very simple to do, guys, as you can see. So the last thing that we want to add to complete this is to add the address. I'm going to go ahead to zoom in. We're going to make a copy of this layer and we're going to move it down here. I'm going to highlight. And then I'm going to type in, I want to highlight and I want to change the color. So I'm going to click and then choose more of a grayish color. So it's not too dark in terms of the color. No, I didn't want to choose a black, but something that still blends in well and also very visible so people don't miss it on the, on the invitation. So with this set, I'm going to move the time up a little. So the last thing that I want to do is let them know that there will be dinner and dancing to follow after the ceremony. So I'm going to click on this text, make a duplicate, set it right beneath the address. I'm going to highlight and I'm going to change the information. I'm going to zoom out. So now that we have everything, I'm going to move my text up a little and I'm going to move this right beneath. I'm going to zoom out so you can see it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click on my polygon with my eraser. I'm going to reduce my eraser head. So guys, this is it. This is very simple to do. So if you want to add the camera raw effect, like I've always taught you, you want to make sure that you select all your layers by holding down your shift. Once you select the bottom image and then you click on group to group everything, you hold down your shift, control, alt, E, and then one image is generated for you. Then all you have to do is go to filter, camera raw filter, and then you can add a little bit more touches. You can take up the saturation. You can reduce the vibrance. So you have something like this while you take up the saturation. So you get a bit of the color, but it's not too much. And it's sort of a bit on the muted side, but it looks real. And you want to just click OK. If you look at the before and after, it's just a slight difference. So if you want that, you do it. And if you want to keep it like this too, you can do that. So guys, that is it. I hope you found this tutorial very helpful. Please like and comment. Don't forget to subscribe and also turn on the notification bell for all future uploads. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm going to upload the next video on Friday. So be on the lookout, guys. Bye for now.